Alrighty everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us is a Lego mock, a Lego custom build of the Alpha 3 Nimbus class V-Wing Starfighter, or just better known as the V-Wing. It has been expertly designed by the creator Thomas Jenkins, the same guy that did the ARC 170, and this incredibly ambitious build I think was super successful as a lot of the main details of this ship are somewhat delicate on the outside. He has created a surprisingly robust version of this model that looks amazing. At the end of the video, I'm gonna be doing a full handling bit to show you guys just how strong this model is. But first, before I get into any more details about the V-Wing Starfighter, let me say that the building instructions can be found at our web store. That's www.brickvault.toys. It's a great way to help support us here at the channel as well as the designers we work with. And with each purchase comes the PDF step-by-step -step building instructions as well as a digital parts list so you can order all the pieces you need to make this build into a reality. And so far, we've been having a blast expanding the minifig scale Star Wars universe with highly, highly detailed Star Wars ships. Obviously, we've got a bunch of other stuff, but this is a Star Wars video. Anyways, it's www.brickvault.toys if you want to check it out. Link in the description below. You can go click it there. But let's get into some of the details of what this ship actually is. The V-Wing was first introduced only at the very, very end of the Clone Wars because you don't really see it during any of the battles uh, during the Clone Wars show, but they were present in the Battle of Coruscant and they also escorted Emperor Palpatine's shuttle in Revenge of the Sith, so the beginning stages of their development certainly had started at the end of the war. They're also the first starships, I believe the very first starships, to have twin ion engines, so technically the TIEs weren't the first ones to have it, which is kind of interesting. And eventually, during the construction of the Empire after the war ended, this was the primary fighter until the TIE fighters replaced him from Senar Fleet Systems. Alright, I might have gotten lost in the weeds a little bit talking about uh, the history of this ship. There really is a lot to know about the V-Wing Starfighter, but let's get into the features of this model. And personally, I think this is one of the more stylistically advanced looking ships within the Star Wars universe. It doesn't look so rugged like so many of the other Starfighters, and instead it's got a much more sleek and striking look like that of a racing ship or something. As you can see, there is a wing folding function with the S foils. They cut forward when they are in landing position like this, and the action works pretty smoothly by turning one of those barrel pieces in the back, which acts as the engine and it's also sort of the gear or trigger to make it work. Now taking the ship off of the stand, I'll show you guys how the landing gear comes out. The one in the center middle folds out pretty darn easily. Just a couple of different clip pieces and a few connections with a ski piece and then getting the landing gear to really line up properly in the back, you actually need to add a couple of little pegs here. Depending on the type of artwork we saw, it looks like a lot of the ships that we saw in the original artwork had pegs that I suppose extended out of the bottom of the back wings. This is something that due to this small delicate size uh, just wasn't an option for us and so Thomas had a pretty good idea of just adding a couple of little pegs to the bottom of the wings in order for the ship to be standing perfectly even. So as you can see uh, if you push the ship backwards uh, the pegs have a tendency to want to fold in on themselves because they are attached to the folding wing function after all. So for the most part when I move the ship around on the ground I tend to pick up the small starfighter and then place it again in a different position instead of just dragging dragging the ship from one place to another, which sometimes can be the case depending on what type of model you're working with. Once again, you can see here that when you rock the model back and forth, it wants to fold in when you push it backwards, but dragging the ship forwards actually is totally fine. In general, I still just like to pick it up. As for the next function, you can move the pilot in and out of the Starfighter. I like to fold those heat sinks out of the way. And then interestingly enough, you have to remove this little bit at the top that also has the head of the astromech attached. And there, that is the maximum articulation for the windscreen to pop up, but it's more than enough space to just grab the fig and pull them out. Inside, the controls are pretty simple, just a couple of different wrench pieces, and though the minifigure doesn't actually stud into anything when you put him inside the model, he's got just enough space to fit, and he's actually quite snug, doesn't jiggle around or anything. Now, speaking of jiggling, sorry there's so much shaking for this model. Uh, on the stand, this ship looks really, really good. I'll get into the stand a little bit later, but it's very top heavy and it's one little Technic arm, so yeah, it is going to be wobbling around quite a bit right after you move the model. Now moving into the last function though, uh, you have the ability to move the turrets, the laser cannons up and down. This was an incredibly interesting and difficult feat for Thomas in order to get, I think, this whole thing to work for the laser cannons to move. The back uh, dark red detailing of that sort of triangular bit is also stationary, and then the gears working in tandem to fold and open the wings 
all traveling through that one arm, having stable pieces, other parts that move, and other parts that are just hooked into gears. Uh, that was That is a really interesting and intricate bit of building there. And it all fits right into those cylinder pieces. It really works quite well. And I can see why the official Lego set models uh, look so different in this capacity, uh, because it's really it really is not something simple and easy to put together. Uh, certainly not for, you know, ages nine and up or whatever the heck that last play set was. Now we're looking at the last details, just some details on the back, just a little bit closer look at what those ion engines look like. Quite different from TIE Fighters. Before the initial modifications of the model, if you twisted the gears a little bit too far, uh, <laughs> sort of the middle of the hull would start to split apart a bit. But now the internal structure is much, much, much stronger. And that can actually be said by quite a few different areas on this model. As you can see, there's a lot of little pieces of this ship that I'm always tweaking around, either changing the placement of the guns or playing around with the heat sinks on the top, making sure that the angle of the wings is curved inward ever so slightly. That's just sort of the nature of this type of build, though I wouldn't really call it a delicate model at the end of the day. So starting off the handling section of this video, uh, here it is just on the stand. You can see how it wobbles back and forth when you move it around. I actually had to widen the stand uh, at first because it was a little too narrow and it was falling side to side, which wasn't a good thing. Now it's very, very stable and you can see how it's attached at the bottom. It's really strong, four studs of attachment there on the very base of it. And I'll show you after the end of the handling just how versatile the head of that stand actually works. When I did knock over the model earlier, uh, the ship actually remained attached to that thing <laughs> as some of the wings may have broken off from falling. Anyways, here is the bottom of the ship. I like the flexible bit of detailing that you can see in the center. The bottom landing gear also opens and closes really, really smoothly. And uh, there's nothing at the bottom here of the ship that I would say is attached delicately or has uh, any weird pressure points where you'll see pieces breaking off. Not a lot of greebling really to even catch your fingers on. Now when looking towards the top, let me just show you guys a few different points where you can actually grab the model. The nose can be grabbed, though it does like to sort of split ever so slightly in the front. It just becomes offset, though still structurally very solid. Then when flipping the model towards the front or nose down, I should say, you can hold it by those engines in the back. This part is very, very strong. Just don't hold it by the actual dark gray barrel piece, I would say. Of course, the back area of the ship can be grabbed quite easily. The ship is very, very swooshable. And you can even hold on to it by those cylindrical areas with all of the very fine detail or mechanical bits on the inside. The wings, of course, always can be moved around a little bit. I'm always tweaking them ever so slightly to try to get the angles of them tilting inwards to just look a little bit more accurate. The guns, of course, swivel up and down like I showed you before. And the angular bits of plate or wedge plate detailing that you see on either side of the nose of the ship can be held onto too, but they are just a little bit more edgy and the, the points of them aren't actually connected. They're held sort of towards the middle or back areas by mixel joints. So for the most part, you don't want to hold on to just the plates just by the nose. But honestly, that's all pretty basic and very, very easy to uh, wrap your head around, especially when handling this model after you build it. So that makes this thing extremely swooshable, really easy to handle, very comfortable in picking up and everything. And of course, you're kind of always tweaking it a bit to be a little bit more accurate. And now here's just a very basic look at what the stand looks like on its own. That top contraption looks a little bit intricate, a little bit bulky for my personal tastes, but it serves a very functional purpose. And let me just show you what types of angles you can achieve with it. So right now you can see we've got it pretty level. The friction holds it in place pretty darn well. You can point it down and then of course it can go back up. I personally like the ability to just kind of play around with the ship's general display ability. It is light enough to the point where the friction on the head of the stand is more than enough to really keep the ship in place without it ever wanting to slowly, uh, you know, sink back down into a nosedive. You can play around with the degrees of how low or high you want the ship to look. And before you ask, yes, the parts list and instructions for the stand are also included with this fighter. I haven't yet played around with it for heavier starships, though I am hopeful that it will be able to operate in a relatively similar fashion with some slightly heavier models. And with that, I think that's everything I want to say about this ship. So guys, if you are interested in getting the instructions, once again, we have a web store, www.brickvault.toys. Let me know what types of ships you'd like to see us make in the future. And if you've stuck around this long in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy, you can always like or subscribe, share the video, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.
watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!